What are the best and worst Sentais of all time? Throughout the almost 50 year history of the franchise, we've had some absolutely amazing and legendary series. But we've also had a few stinkers. I've watched every Sentai, so I thought it'd be fun to take on the extremely difficult task of ranking them all in order, from worst to best. I rank these based on what I've seen from the Toku community at large, as well as my own opinions. And with so many seasons, I'm sure we'll disagree on some of these. But of course, let me know what I got wrong or right in the comments. And without further ado, the worst of the worst. Number 47, Sun Vulcan. Now who thought it would be a good idea to have a Sentai team made up of three dudes, and that's it? This series has no female rangers, and that's pretty weird. I also do not like the intro song at all. I think their suits look pretty weird, and ultimately this is just a very generic season. This series is a pseudo-sequel to Denji Man, which is a much better Sentai, and one of the few bright spots of this series is Machiko Soga reprising her role as Queen Hedrion as she teams up with the incredibly unique Darth Vader ripoff known as Hell Saturn. <laughs> but ultimately, this is just not a very good season. <laughs> Number 46 is Turbo Ranger, a vehicle-themed Sentai that is extremely forgettable, with a generic plot and generic suits, although I think their helmets do look pretty cool. One bright spot of this show, though, is the first episode, where we have the return of all of the previous Sentais. Very cool. But you know, if you're looking for a vehicle-themed Sentai, you can do a lot better than this one. Number 45 is Five Man. Why are they called Five Man? Well, because there's five of them, of course. And they happen to be siblings. In Five Man, they face off against the Zone Empire. And this season has one of the weirder tropes that thankfully did not stick for very long, which was earrings on the female's helmets. Ultimately, this season is very generic. I know I've said that word a lot already in this video. But yeah, generic. They're just, you know, they're a Sentai. I actually had to re-watch this series because it's so forgettable that I honestly could not remember much about it. I don't know what that says about how memorable things are in this series, but take that for what you will. Next up at number 44 is Nininger. Now, I have a soft spot for this series. There are things that I really like about it, mostly Fuka and Kasumi, but I can call a spade a spade and point out that this series has not the greatest writing and the tone can be pretty juvenile at times. I do really like their suits though. I think their suits are some of the best, actually. But if you look online, this show gets a lot of hate. And even though I have a soft spot for it, I'm willing to acknowledge that it could have been a lot better. Next up at number 43 is Live Man. This was the first Sentai season with an animal theme. And I actually really like their suits. But this is just not a series that I choose to go back and rewatch very often. I don't hate this show, as I don't hate any Sentai actually. It's just kinda meh. Next up at number 42 is Goggle 5. I do not like these suits at all. And the series as a whole is just kind of bland. It's not bad, it's just incredibly forgettable. They also do rhythmic gymnastics, which is pretty strange. But this was the first season to have a Black Ranger, which is kind of a cool note. Die, 
Next up at number 41 is Dynaman. Now, they look like they're wearing baseball uniforms, which is kind of strange, but you know, I don't hate it. In Japan, this series was nicknamed Kayaku Sentai, with Kayaku meaning gunpowder in Japanese. And this is because of all of the explosions in the series. This series had the most gunpowder used in a Sentai, according to a producer. You know, I don't necessarily view that as a bad thing. This season is just fun, and I really like the overall look of it a lot. Interestingly enough, this is the first Sentai series where the suits were made of spandex, which has come to be something that Sentai is known for. And because of the spandex baseball-like uniforms, the series was originally going to be called Baseball Sentai V-Leaguer. Baseball is pretty dang popular in Japan. Next up is Ghost Sager. I love the intro of this series, and I really really like how clean and classic looking the suits are. So why is this series so far down on the list? It's mostly because of the story, but also because the cast is kind of forgettable. Now the Ghost Sagers are basically angels. They are Gose angels. The cast is a little on the weaker side, even though there are a few that I really like here, like Eri, but I'm not really a huge fan of Alata, also known as Gose Red. I just don't find him super likable. This season features Gose Knight, who looks pretty sweet. He almost resembles a common rider with how much armor he has on. But yeah, once you watch this season, you probably won't watch it again. At number 39, we have Flashman. This is one series that I almost never see get discussed, and it always looked to me like they were wearing a pair of aviator glasses. But the plot here is a little wacky. Basically, five children are kidnapped by a group known as the Alien Hunters for the purposes of experimenting. They were rescued by an alien race known as Flash and were taken to different planets in order to train. And then eventually they would return to Earth to fight against the Reconstructive Experiment Empire mess, which is really what they're called, strangely enough. Show isn't bad, but it's not really great either. I do like the suits quite a bit though. Number 38 is Bioman. I actually quite like Bioman, and these suits are pretty dang cool. I also really like Pibo, who is a gold robot that acts as a sort of mentor of the group. And I have to say, this song is very catchy, and I find myself singing it randomly even when I haven't watched this series in a while. Next up at number 37 is Car Ranger. It is a bit on the generic side, and the Rangers here aren't super memorable, but I really like the way their helmets look, and the music in general, including the intro and outro. That's why it's not lower on this list, despite being a pretty unpopular season. But you know, when I was a kid, I really liked racing go-karts, so there's actually something about this one that I kind of dig. Next up at number 36 is Oranger, and if we compare this one with Car Ranger, the reason this one edges it out and is literally one spot higher on the list is because of King Ranger. This dude looks freaking awesome. In fact, the suits in this series in general look freaking awesome. But that being said, the story is weird, inconsistent, and confusing at times. This season was originally quite dark and gritty, 
but throughout the course of the season it would flip and become a more juvenile and comedic season. And the tone shift just doesn't really work that well. Next up at number 35 is Tokuger, and I know I'm going to get some flack for this one. This series has its healthy share of supporters, but I've never been able to get past the costumes. They have train tracks on their chest, they have train tracks on their visors, and honestly the mecha doesn't look that great. This series is obviously train themed, but yeah, I don't really have much affinity for any of the rangers here. It just never clicked with me. And I'm pretty open-minded when it comes to toku shows, but I think if you're talking about a train themed show, Kamen Rider Dino does it so much better. Next up at number 34 is Yu Soldier. I have to admit, the suits look pretty cool. In fact, all of their equipment looks pretty cool. But the intro is abysmal. The outro is also abysmal. And I never really clicked with any of the rangers in this series. They're just kind of forgettable. I find the series to be a bit juvenile, which I know is kind of a weird criticism for a Sentai series, but it is what it is. Next up at number 33 is Go Busters. When this series was first unveiled, my initial thought was that the outfits were so plain and boring. That being said, there are some things that I like here, mostly the Yellow Ranger, Yoko, just because she's an abso cutie. Despite my opinions on their suits, I still feel like this is an incredibly watchable and entertaining season, nonetheless. Number 32 is Battle Fever J. This is a throwback and an incredibly important season for the history of the franchise. Each ranger here is representing a different country, with of course the Red Ranger representing Japan. If you're into old-school 1970s toku, this would be a good choice, but I just have to point out that Miss America is absolutely terrifying. And having a wig on top of her helmet is kind of a strange choice. Next up at number 31 is Go Onger, another vehicle themed Sentai. This one lands somewhere in the middle. The suits here are okay, but I've never really been a fan of the seat belts on their suits. The intro is pretty weak, in my opinion, but despite those things, I'll still give Go Onger a nice rewatch every now and then. Next up at number 30 is Kira Major. This show is bright, extremely bright, which makes sense because Kira Major can be translated as Sparkling Ranger. The theme of this season is gemstones, but to me, they kind of always look like Jolly Ranchers. And when I think of this season, I think of it as Jolly Rancher Ranger. The suits are not my favorite. They're kind of plain, with the only thing to really give them some flair being the shininess. 
Unfortunately, the production of this season was stopped in its tracks due to the pandemic in 2020. And there are only 45 episodes. So who knows? If not for that, it could be higher on the list, but probably not. Number 29 is Gal Ranger. This series is not offensively bad, but it's also not exceptionally great or memorable. We've had a lot of animal themed Sentais, but this one is pretty elaborate, and I do like their costumes, as well as the mechas. But I do like Sei, the White Ranger, quite a bit, and I think she has one of the cooler White Ranger suits. Next up at 28 is Jojer. So somebody at Toei had the idea to mix Minecraft with animals, and we have Jojer. Everybody on the team, except for the Red Ranger, is a Juman, which is basically an animal that can take on the appearance of a human as to blend in better. Despite the kind of strange concept, there is a ton of charm in this season, and I do find myself re-watching it quite a bit. Next up at 27 is Jaka, Dengeki Tai. This is of course a playing card themed season, and to me it's kind of a tale of two seasons. The first half is sort of generic, but watchable nonetheless. However, when Big One is introduced, the show becomes far more entertaining. And this is due to the sheer charisma of Big One. He is a master of disguise, and it's often quite entertaining to see what he's going to wear next. This song is also an earworm, and it gets stuck in my head quite a bit. Number 26 is Geki Ranger. Somebody at Toei watched The Jungle Book because Jen, our Red Ranger here, was literally raised by tigers in the forest. This season is themed around Kung Fu with a sort of cat motif, which is kind of unique for Sentai. I really like their suits here, just because there are no other Sentais really that look like Geki Ranger, except for Geki Ranger. And when the series came out, I just thought it was so fresh and entertaining. Not one that gets a lot of love in the community, but it's pretty good nonetheless. Next up at number 25 is Ginga Man. I really think that this show has one of the best intros in the franchise, but despite that, it suffers a little bit because it's kind of forgettable. First of all, the suits are okay, but the helmets I think are pretty lacking. And this show also features one of my weird pet peeves. And that is, when the rangers are unhinged, instead of wearing regular clothes, they're wearing strange warrior outfits. And this is something that's a bit of a pet peeve of mine in Sentai. I honestly can't tell you why, but yeah, I don't like these strange warrior costumes. I don't really see people saying that this is one of the worst Sentais, but I also don't see people saying that this is one of the best Sentais, so it falls somewhere in the middle. Next up is Gogo 5. 
another somewhat forgettable season from the late 90s slash early 2000s. The Rangers in this season have their visors open up so you can see part of their face from within their helmets. And this is something that I think is pretty cool and unique. The show is themed around emergency services and first responders. This is a decently entertaining series to watch, but it's in the middle of the list, which is where I think it belongs. Next up is Q Ranger at number 23, and if you like Sentai seasons with a ton of rangers, this is a good one for you. I really like all the different personalities on this show, and I think the intro here is one of the best. Interestingly enough, Washi Pink is voiced by Mao Ichimichi, who is also the actress that played Luca Milfi on Gokaiger. That's always been one of the coolest things about this series, in my opinion. Next up at number 22, we have Change Man. Does this series have the best writing? No. Does it have the best intro or costumes? No. But there's a weird kind of 80s charm about it that I can't quite put my finger on. All of the rangers here are based around mythological creatures, and they battle one of the weirdest villains in the history of Sentai, Bazu. Who is a giant floating torso and head. This is a series that I go back to watch quite a bit. Next up at number 21 is Time Ranger. The intro here is kind of weird, but I quite like their suit designs, and of course the fact that there are two Red Rangers, the second of which being Time Fire, a ranger that I think is pretty cool, and I really enjoy his story quite a bit. Time Fire! As you would assume probably from the name of the show, they travel through time. It's a time theme. And the tone of the show is quite different from a lot of other Sentais, which I appreciate. Next up at number 20 is Zhu Danger. This is probably going to be one of the most divisive entries on this list because Zhu Danger led to Power Rangers and is thusly an incredibly legendary series within the franchise. Dragon Ranger Budai is my dude, but the main reasons why it's here at number 20 instead of higher are one, because the intro is pretty weak, the story can be pretty slow at times, and they have their strange warrior costumes that I'm not a fan of. But with that being said, there are bright spots in the show that are incredibly bright. Like I already mentioned, Budai is awesome. Geki, the Red Ranger, is also an excellent leader and fits the role of the Red Ranger perfectly. We have Machiko Soga as Bandora, one of the greatest villain performances in the history of Sentai. We have Lami, who I absolutely love. So yeah, with this show, you might love it, you might hate it. For me, it falls somewhere in the middle. Next up at number 19 is Lupin Ranger vs. Pat Ranger. This show is very unique in that there are two teams. One team is a team of thieves, and the other team is a team of cops. So it has an interesting cops and robbers theme. Most of the stuff surrounding this show is decent, but not amazing. Such as the intro, their suits, 
the writing, etc. But because of how unique it is, it's very entertaining to watch. And if you haven't watched it, I would recommend it for that reason. Number 18 is Kyore Yuger. This show has a great intro and a lot of rangers, and it's also extremely colorful. I've seen people complain about this show because it's a little bit juvenile, but if you're an adult male like me, I would just tell you that that's why Amy is there. Just for you. Because this girl is an absolute cutie. And yeah, I think this show just has a ton of style and personality, and I also really, really like the suits. Like, as far as the helmet designs, these are some of the best that Toei has ever done. Number 17 is Mask Man. This is a show that gets some flack, but I really appreciate the dark and gritty vibe of this show. This show is themed around ki and auras, basically internal power. And this was also the very first Sentai to feature an individual mecha for each member, which is something that obviously has become a staple of Sentai over the years. And this is a series that I think is better than the sum of its parts. And if you're looking for a 1980s Sentai, you could do worse than Mask Man. Number 16 is Bulkinger. Now when this series was first unveiled, I thought it looked kind of generic, like another vehicle themed Sentai, but there's just some kind of charm about it that I can't put my finger on. I really enjoy the cast here, specifically the Yellow Ranger. Everybody just kind of works together and plays off of each other well, and it makes for an entertaining season. Now like I said, at first glance this appears to be just another vehicle themed Sentai, but it's actually a lot more than that. Vulcan means adventure, and I think this is probably the closest that we're ever going to get to an Indiana Jones or Tomb Raider-esque season of Sentai. Also, I have to point out that the conflict between the Black Ranger and the Silver Ranger is thoroughly entertaining. Number 15 is Gorenja, the original Sentai, an oldie but a goodie. This series was worked on by Shotaro Ishinomori, who is also the creator of Kamen Rider, and their suits bear a strong resemblance to the early Kamen Riders. The squad here is pretty memorable and iconic, my favorite being the Yellow Ranger, because he's a bit chubby and he's always eating curry rice. In fact, that's probably his strongest characteristic. Although the show is entertaining in its own right, a large reason why it's this high on the list is due to just how iconic it is. Especially Akarenja, who would go on to be featured in many films and crossovers throughout the years. This is one show that you should watch just for your toku education if you've never watched it. Like if there was a college course where you learned about toku, I guarantee you Goranger would be one of your assignments. This is an absolute classic. Number 14 is Dinjiman. Basically, a lot of the things I just said about Goranger, you can apply to Dinjiman. It's not as iconic, but it comes from the same era, and it has quite a bit more style and flair. The theme song here is killer, and the suits look pretty dang good for a 1970s toku show. Denji Man also features Queen Hedrion, played by Machiko Soga, and this woman just used to absolutely light up the screen, regardless of what role she was playing. <laughs> Some of the rangers here are pretty likable, and if I was to describe this show in one word, it would be cool. Dingy Man is just cool. This is the first Sentai series that had a transforming robo named Daidenjin, and this was the first Sentai series to feature actual visors on the helmet, 
instead of just a hard plastic like the rest of the helmet. Next up at number 13 is Kaku Ranger, Ninja Ninja. The intro is iconic and memorable. The suits are slick and stylish. And Tsuruhime, the White Ranger, is one of my favorite White Rangers. Ninja Hawaii, Tsuruhime. This is a series that you will not want to miss. The Rangers here are very unique and likable, and they play off each other quite well. I also have to mention the Flowery Konoichi team, which is a team of evil females that oppose the Kaku Rangers, and they're pretty cool. Also, the Black Ranger is a cowboy. Yep. Here you go. <laughs> Oh, wonderful. And the mechas on this show are some of the coolest in the entire franchise. At number 12, we have Magi Ranger. They have capes. Yeah, Sentai with capes. But it actually works pretty well. They are all siblings and they love each other and fight as real siblings would. And they're all very likable in their own way. My favorite ranger being Urara, also known as Magi Blue. She's very loving and nurturing and really looks out for her family. And eventually she would marry Hikaru, also known as Magi Shine, the gold ranger of the team. Everybody on this season is a magician, as you would assume by Magi Ranger, and they have magic wands. I think the helmets look really awesome, and I find this season to be visually well designed. The intro song is kinda on the weird side, but with that being said, it will probably get stuck in your head. Okay, all right. But the outro is insanely strange, but in an entertaining way. This show has a lot of heart, it has a lot of charm, and I like it a lot. Next up at number 11 is Hurakenger, another ninja themed sentai. This one is so colorful and stylish and charming that I found myself re-watching this show many times over the years. All three base rangers are super likable you have Yusuke, who is Hurricane Red, and he's very courageous and strong-willed, which makes him very endearing as the leader of the team. You have Nanami, who is Hurricane Blue, Hurricane Blue. and she's full of pep, charm, and likability, and she's a very talented singer. Then we have Kota, also known as Hurricane Yellow, and he is very empathetic and likes to help people. We also have the Gao Rangers, which are Kabuto Ranger and Kuaga Ranger, and these guys look freaking awesome. As well as one of the absolute coolest looking sixth rangers, Shurikinger. That's right. And man, this guy is awesome, complete with a transforming helmet. The intro and outro are awesome and memorable. And yeah, I need to move on because I'm finding myself gushing about this show right now. It's really good. At number 10 is Dawn Brothers. Now this series just came out a few years ago, but it was an incredibly unique season, being that the Rangers transform into non-humanoid creatures when they hench in. In Japanese folklore, there is a legend of Momotoro, who was a boy that was born from a peach. We also have some very unique forms, such as the Blue Ranger resembling a gorilla, the Pink Ranger, who is a male, being winged and flying around. We have Subasa, the Black Ranger, who turns into Inu brother, Inu meaning dog, although in my opinion he more closely resembles a cat or a fox. And my favorite on the team being Haruka, also known as Oni's sister, who is a manga artist and very charming and likable. Hey. We also have quite a few other rangers here, 
and the dynamic here is very exciting and out of the ordinary. The art style of the show is incredible, as it all resembles traditional Japanese watercolor paint, which is something that I'm quite a fan of. This show is just dripping with charm, and it's very exciting to watch. This also seems to be quite a popular show, so I think it belongs towards the top here. Number 9 is King Osier, and yeah, yeah, I know we just finished this series, but this is another incredibly unique season, being a royalty theme that's kind of untapped territory for the franchise. For the most part, the rangers here are pretty likable, and this show just gets you hyped. The story here is pretty good, having to do with the rulers of multiple kingdoms, and our Red Ranger, who becomes an unlikely ruler. Not to mention, the intro is just absolutely fire, and I really, really like it. Not to mention, purple is one of my favorite colors, and it's pretty cool having a purple ranger in the core group. It remains to be seen how this show ages, and how it's remembered after a long period of time, but I think it's pretty damn good, and I'd say it belongs here. Next up is one that you might not have even expected to be on this list, because it is unofficial. And that is Akiba Ranger, at number 8. Though this is an unofficial season, I still decided to put it on this list because it is absolutely hilarious, and if you're an adult that's into Sentai like me, you will definitely appreciate this show. There are tons and tons and tons of throwbacks and references to previous seasons, and I think that if you're a fan of the franchise, you owe it to yourself to watch this show. Every episode features rangers from previous seasons, as well as toys, and just cool things like that, that will get you hyped if you're a fan. Also, did I mention that it's hilarious? Because it is. This is basically a spoof of Sentai and it's pure fan service. There are two seasons of Akiba Ranger, and they're both really good. Next up at number seven is Mega Ranger. It's been no secret on this show that Miku is my favorite pink ranger because she's just so bubbly and full of personality. But this show as a whole is pretty freaking cool, and in the late 90s, it really seemed cutting edge and high tech, and they surf on flying hoverboards, which is pretty cool. I really like this cast of rangers a lot, and I like how they play off each other because they have starkly different personalities from each other, and it just works. Not to mention, Nezerijian Mobile Commander Uganda looks freaking awesome, despite his name being a mouthful and kind of a pain in the butt to actually say. Number 6 is Abba Ranger, one hell of a dino themed season. The intro is catchy and memorable, the suits look incredible, especially that of Abare Kira. And if you're looking for a dino themed season, you cannot go wrong with Abaranja. This show is just absolutely entertaining, and you will not get bored watching this show. There's not a whole lot that's super unique about this season. It's just a well done and entertaining dino themed Sentai that holds up well after all this time. Number five is Zinkaiger, a celebration season. 
This season is really unique because only one member of the Sentai is a human, the rest are Kikanoids, which are based off of mechas from previous Sentai seasons. Our leader here is Zen Kaiser, who is a white ranger that visually is based upon several rangers from the history of the franchise. Those being Big One from Jaka, Aka Ranger from Go Ranger, and his chess piece is based off of Dragon Caesar, which was Dragon Ranger's mecha from Zhu Ranger. This show is pretty lighthearted and humorous and does a really good job at staying entertaining throughout. Not to mention, the intro of this season is absolute fire and might be one of the catchiest theme songs of all time. I really like Zinkai Juran, who is the red Kikanoid and is visually based on Dai Zhujin from Zhu Ranger. He has a ton of personality, and he's the life of the party. <laughs> Next up at number four is Jetman, a bird-themed sentai. This is a group of pilots that assemble together to form Jetman, and they literally fly jets, hence the name. I think the suits here are absolutely incredible, from the sleek helmet designs to the iconic wings under their arms. I just think that this show looks how a Japanese superhero show should look. And the characters here are also incredibly interesting and well written, my favorite being Guy, the Black Ranger. He's a bit of a loner, and he's not really super cool with taking direction, but this dude is just deep. He has a lot going on, and I think that's indicative of the series at large, is that all of these characters have a lot of depth, which is obviously a good thing when it comes to writing. The intro is incredibly memorable, and will definitely get stuck in your head. I've watched this show back countless times over the years. And I will continue to, because it's just really good. Number three is Die Ranger. Some of the coolest helmet designs in the history of the franchise. Basically everybody on this show looks awesome. This series is based on Chinese mythology, and there's a lot of uniqueness to it. Idolo, Budo! Idolo, Budo! Idolo, Budo! Our heroes face Gorma, who dress like they're going to a BDSM convention, but are incredibly memorable nonetheless. The rangers here all have unique weapons based off of wushu and various forms of Chinese martial arts, and I have to say that the action in this show is really, really good. We have one of the best pink rangers in the franchise, which is Rin. And we have Kiba Ranger, who is a young boy named Ko, and he is pervy for Ren. Like, like really, really into Ren. Hmm? But this show is just stylish, man. The mechas are so unique. They look so awesome. Everything looks awesome in this show. Number two is Deca Ranger. I freaking love this show. It's hilarious, it's charming, it's memorable. I could watch this show a thousand times and not get bored. The intro is incredible. Both outros are also incredible. And of course, this show has Mr. Nascience himself, Deca Break. Uh -huh. The dialogue between Deca Break and Bon, our Red Ranger, is thoroughly entertaining. Nonsense. When they first meet, they do not get along very well, as Bond does not like taking orders from Deca Break. 
The Pink Ranger is super cute and loves to take bubble baths. You have Jasmine, who is an ESPer, and she's pretty cool. We have Shun with his shinking pose, where he will stand on his head in order to solve crimes and see things from a new perspective. And we have Hoji, our Blue Ranger, who is a bit of a hothead and a professional soldier, and I think that that's necessary here. Not to mention, we have Deca Master, Doggy Kruger, who is a literal dog. And yeah, this show is hilarious and charming, and I honestly have not been able to get enough of it in 20 years. Alright guys, the number one best Sentai is Gokaiger. I bet a lot of y'all saw this coming, but the amount of charm, fan service, and the sense of adventure in this show is so high that I have to put it here. First of all, I think the intro song is the best in the history of the franchise, which is a huge statement to make, but it's that good. Captain Marvelous, our Red Ranger, is unlike any other Red Ranger. To say he's unique would be an understatement. Okay, let's go. This guy has teased hair and doesn't try to act like a hero really much at all. He just does his thing. We have Luca, who is an absolute cutie and my favorite female ranger of all time. She's super cute, but also cool as hell. You know, like, like this is a girl you could go have a beer with. Not to mention, she could kick some butt too. We have Joe, the Blue Ranger, who might be one of the biggest badasses in the history of Sentai. And with that long ponytail, he kind of looks like a Final Fantasy character. But this is a dude you don't want to mess with. Then we have Doc, who is a bit of an optimist. And we have I'm de Famille, also known as Gokai Pink, who is a literal princess, and she's prim and proper. The dynamic of this team is incredibly entertaining just due to the different types of personalities and characters that are featured here. And then later on, Guy, also known as Gokai Silver, is added to the mix, and he's also incredibly charismatic and entertaining. So it just makes for a great dynamic here. Throughout the series, they fly around on their Gokai Galleon, which is basically a giant pirate ship. And like I said before, the sense of adventure here is staggering. When you couple it with the theme song, the show just has a feeling that they could encounter anything. There's just a lot of wonder and excitement that comes with this show. These rangers form switch into all of the previous rangers that came before them. So if you're a Sentai historian or a new fan, this would be a great season to watch because you will see tons of rangers and forms that you love featured within this show. This show is absolutely incredible. If you never watched it, you owe it to yourself to watch this show. This is one of the most popular seasons of all time, and for good reason. So with this many Sentai guys, which one is your favorite? What did I get right? What did I get wrong? I'm sure you guys have thoughts. Let me know which ones I missed in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, it would mean a ton to me if you would smack the out of that like button. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time. Bye.